uh, I'm going to show you how to extract a part of a photograph and then place that into a file you are working on in Illustrator so that you're able to have that photographic image in a graphic file. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is you're going to open up Photoshop and, and at this point you probably haven't used it a whole lot or you, you, you're not necessarily familiar with it but it has a similar layout to Illustrator. Um, the tools are a little different and today I'm going to show you kind of the simplest way to extract uh, a part of an image uh, for a larger thing. So um, I've got in Illustrator, I've got my document started. Okay, so when you're doing whatever you're doing, I created a new layer uh, for my background, which I just set as a black. Then the second layer is, uh, is part of it that I have already extracted and added it so that you can see how it looks when just one part of something is pulled out and placed onto a graphic element. Um, what I want to do is I want to create that, create a layer that's specifically for that image. That way I can play with how it, it lays um, in front or behind other things that I'm going to build on my graphic. Um, I always, we always like to work in layers so that we can rearrange stuff and move it pretty simply without affecting a whole lot of other stuff. So the one that's there, I'm going to give its own layer. So it's layer two. And then I created layer three for the one that I'm going to extract now and then place in there again. Okay, so this is started. This is my my start for my Illustrator file. So I'm going to go back to Photoshop, and <clears throat> we're going to use what's called the Magic Wand tool. Uh, magic Wand tools al allows you to select things of similar color or value in an image. Um, so I can use it. It's on the left hand side on the toolbar here, like in Illustrator. Magic Wand tool is here. It's your uh, fourth one down. You may have the quick selection tool op on there as one of your defaults, which would look like the brush with the, the kind of the dotted line around it. If you hold and click on that, you will find the Magic Wand tool in there. Um, and we'd rather have the Magic Wand tool than our quick selection tool. So first thing, if you look on the right hand side, you'll see layers. You want to make sure the layer that is the picture is selected so that you know what you're working with. And then if you want to pull just a small part of this out, I suggest you zoom in. So this bottom one is the one that I pulled out that you already saw on the Illustrator document. Um, and that this time I'm going to pull out this top one. Uh, this It's a little bit larger. So I'm going to pull I'm going to zoom in a little bit and using my magic wand tool, I'm just going to click on part of it. And you'll notice those little marching ants around around the flower. So I'm going to press down and I want these areas in there too because if I don't add those, those would be holes in my in my image. So I'm going to hold down shift and I'm just going to click on the stuff that I want to add in. And you'll notice it like when I selected this yellow part over here, it pulled in all of the similar values in that area. So now I'm just going to make sure I go through and I select the things that I want. I don't want this green leaf in it. Um, and I, if I really wanted to, I could edit out this stuff. Um, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Make sure I select this as this is part of part of the what I want. Okay, so uh, here's my flower. I've got it selected. So to extract this from the picture, I'm going to go up to select and mask. Okay. If this icon doesn't appear at the top of yours, it should because these adjust to your magic wand tool. You can go to select and within that you can find select and mask. Okay. So I'm going to click on select and mask. And it's going to um, it's going to open up this dialog box on the right that says is properties and it will change the look of this. If it doesn't, if it just says, uh, if you just have marching ants, this view mode will be helpful. So you can choose onion skin, which would show, it just kind of puts this skin, this checkerboard skin over everything that isn't selected. Um, or I can choose this red overlay. What I don't like about this red overlay on this one is what I'm selecting is red. So to put a red overlay on that just kind of gets confusing. So the onion skin works pretty well. 
If you're concerned about little parts around the outside being selected, click it. Okay. So I'm going to go back to onion skin. If I want to, I can change the transparency so that I see less of what is in the background or I can see more of what is in the background. Um, I'm just going to set it at like 25% to 30% so I can still kind of see what's back there, but this is the bulk of what I'm selecting. Okay. If there's things that have been selected that you do not want, you can click this minus sign here and go in and I can go over this area and I can get rid of that and this little like wedge that's there. Okay. If I come in and I accidentally cover up things I do want, what I would then do is click on this plus sign and come back and I would just kind of click and drag into that area and that's going to allow it's going to the program itself is going to start to figure out what you, what exactly you want selected in your in your masking okay you can change the size of the select tool right now I'm going to keep it at 7 just because it does a, just enough um, and I'm going to take out this stuff in here Just this kind of stuff on the edge. Okay. Um, let me take out this dark spot down here. All right. And now I'm going to go into my black and white just to check to see what's been selected. So you can see like, like these faint white lines. That way I know I need to go back and go over those that those aren't there. Otherwise those will be just kind of these weird thin lines of color where I don't want them. Alright so now I've gotten rid of kind of that little thin stuff that I don't necessarily want and I've got my flower selected so I'm just going to go back to my onion skin. Then I'm going to scroll down and my output settings because what with this image that you are now extracting from the larger. So <clears throat> I can do it as a new layer, which would create a new layer in this in this image, but I want to do this as a new document because I'm going to use this flower. Maybe I'll use it for multiple things. Maybe I'll need to come back to it and use it on a menu and a business card and a promotional flyer and a graphics element or whatever. So if I put it into a new document, it's always going to be there for me to extract for as many things as I might need it for. So I don't need to constantly be going back. So I'm going to click on new document and then I'm going to click OK. And it's going to create this document here where it's just the flower on a checkerboard background. What that checkerboard background does is that shows you that there really isn't any menu. It'll just be the flower. There'll be no boxes around it. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to save this and I'm just going to save it as flower 2 since I already have a flower chosen. I'm just going to do the basic formatting options for Photoshop. Okay. So that's that's it for you know, that's it for extracting that. You can do that for a number of different things. It doesn't necessarily need to be flowers or food or you can extract people, you can extract items, um, whatever you need to pull out of a single photograph, you can do that. Then I'm going to open up Illustrator again, and I've got my document here. Now I want to place that flower in here. I don't want to just go into Photoshop and copy and then paste into here. What I want to do is actually place that image into my file here. So I've got my layer selected that I want it to go into. I'm going to go to File and then I'm going to go to place. Okay. It's important that we do place, right? There's no insert. There's no copy and paste. It's just file place. So I'm going to choose flower two. I'm going to click on place and it's going to give me this little thing. And what this is, this isn't the actual size of my flower. This is just kind of, I click and it places it. Now my Photoshop file was really large. So I can zoom out and I can resize this by 
and or I can go to object transform and I can scale it and I can scale it you know I'm just pressing the up and down arrows to change that so I can make this one a little bit bigger and then I can hit OK and what this is is this is the bounding box for that full-size document in Photoshop with all the checkerboard stuff around it but I'm really only concerned about the flower itself so then I can just move this and I can move my flower and it can if it goes off the edge that's okay like if you only want part of it that's fine because when we print all that's gonna print is what's in your document okay it's not gonna print this stuff on the outside and that's how I can arrange that so now I can go back if I want to and I can move yeah, if I want to move it I can move it on top of the other one um, and I can take this one and I can move it to wherever I want and then if I have a text box that I'm working with I can put my text in because it's on a black background I want contrasting text I change my text size and then I put my item in there and then as we messed with text before you can see it can go over my image and we obviously don't want to necessarily cover up important things um, but then you can play with you know your placement of your layers so that can go underneath it um, or on top of okay so that's how you extract an image if you want to include a photographed item into your your graphic um, into um, whatever you're building you're able to extract that from an actual photograph and bring it into your illustrator file uh, it's always better to take photographs of take your own photographs of the images that you want that way you know what size the file is um, you have the exact look that you're going for sometimes when you download pictures the file sizes are either really small or they're really large and it becomes a little bit more difficult to work with um, if they're really small they get grainy as you enlarge them uh, if they're too large sometimes it adds a little too much data to your image uh, so it's always easier to work with original images that you have taken um, but there may be times when you need to extract it from a public use image so that is how you uh, extract from Photoshop and can use them then in Illustrator